Good morning, Felicia. Good morning. How are you guys today? Very well. And you hope you're keeping safe. Oops, thank you for joining us at the webinar. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You're welcome, Caleb. We'll just give everyone like five minutes more to join in and then we'll start. Just give everyone five minutes to join in and then we can start the webinar. If you can hear me, just type something in the chat window and then we can start. We we'll start in about two minutes. I see people joining now. We currently have about 14 participants, so we'll just start in one minute. Welcome everyone to the webinar titled Finding Job Opportunities During an Economic Crisis. So I'll be your host for today. My name is Felicia Odimosu from Talent Bureau Limited as principal consultant. I've got 20 years of experience, four and a half years in the banking sector, three years in IT sector, and 14 years in equipment and retail consulting. So we'll be sharing tips that will help you focus during this period of you know, lockdown, stay at home, we're not working, most of us are working from home, most of us are looking to change you know, jobs, some of us are looking for more opportunities, some of us are just bored of being at home and not doing anything. But we're going to be sharing with you tips right now on how you can keep your focus on, on what's important at this time. So the agenda for today will be the current landscape in Nigeria, jobs in demand, how you can optimize your resume to suit any job that fits your profile or your experience, eight years passing, video applications are becoming very rampant now. We've seen candidates you know, sending video applications because most of them can't go for interviews. So we help review their video interviews, your advice on how video applications should look. And then um, we, we also want to talk to you about leveraging your networks. And how health is your number one asset. So I'll start. 
what's the current landscape in Nigeria? If you look through or you look at the slide I'm showing you right now, you will see that you can actually decode the economies of COVID-19. This was put together by the company called Decode, and I thought it would be good for me to share with all of us. I'll run through all the slides in 20 minutes so that in the next 15 minutes before the end of the webinar, we can have questions, answers, and then any question we can take through the webinar, you can always contact us and then we'll make sure that all questions are answered. So if you look at the tourism and leisure sector, you can see it's in red. We have potential losers and we've got the potential winners at this time. There's aviation and maritime, the automotive sector, the construction and real estate. And then as we go along, you can see it turns green. There's manufacturing, financial services, education, oil and gas, and then agriculture. Of course, people have to eat at this time. We can see e-commerce. We can see the ICT sector is booming right now. Even for webinars, a lot of people need to subscribe to you know, the internet. Um, personal care is booming now. Food processing is booming now. Medical supply is booming now. So we can see how the economy is actually looking. So this would also give you an idea of companies that are recruiting and companies that are hiring. It will help you channel your energy in the right direction. So for those in digital marketing, for those in IT sector, for those in the food processing, for those in medical supply, for those in ICT, for those in e-commerce, they're the ones booming right now. So that is one, one other information I'll um, be sharing. Then looking at the jobs in demand right now, there's some good news for us. We have jobs and industries that are booming. Insurance is booming right now. IT and telecoms, healthcare, medical supply and services, agriculture, FMCG companies, doctors and nurses are working really hard right now to make sure that everybody is okay. Um, call centers, customer service group, government, also working right now. We've got transportation, and then food processing is also working you know, right now. It's booming right now. So you, how can you opt optimize your CV for ATS passing? Actually, ATS passing is something new now for those of us maybe in Nigeria that haven't really you know, gotten to do this in the past. Right now, for you to be able to send your CV and to ensure that it goes through ATS passing. ATS passing is actually analyzing and ensuring that your CV is properly reviewed, is put apart, is dissected in such a way that important information is pulled out of it, is recognized, and is properly, in, properly stored in the candidate's database. So if you're sending your CV in for a particular role, for example, you're sending your CV in for marketing manager, your CV should have keywords like marketing, keywords like manager, keywords like branding, communication. The keywords that enable your CV go through the ATS person. So I'm taking you through work history, qualifications, contact details, and then the keywords that you need for your CV to go through the ATS person. A lot of companies can hire right now. A lot of companies are hiring. And then a lot of companies can actually interview physically because everyone is meant to be at home to stay safe. So how do you combat this challenge of not being able to go for an interview? So the best thing to do is to go to send me your CVs, putting them in the right format, right work history, qualifications that are necessary for you to go through. If you have any questions, please just raise your hand and then we'll look through your questions. But I'll run through all this so that you can begin to ask questions as we go along. So to optimize your CV, you need to be able to use the right file type. If it's PDF, if it's Word document, those are the usually acceptable or accepted file types. But for you to use any other format, you can ask whoever 
is in charge of the recruitment process. And then you need to avoid images, avoid charts, and other fancy graphics. Yes, you can use the ones in the white. If it's a graphic rule, or if it's a communications rule, or if it's a rule in the media, it's fine. But for other rules that are very, very professional rules, like marketing and sales, maybe rules in the bank, you need to avoid images and charts and other fancy graphics so that your CV is as basic as it needs to be. Then check spelling, check grammar, and then ensure that your font size is consistent. If you're going to be using Century Gothic, ensure that Century Gothic is used all through. If you're going to be using Time Roman, ensure that Time Roman is used all through so that you know there's consistency and your CV is very professional. And then keep important details of the headers and footers. I've seen CVs where candidates put state of origin, candidates put, um, apart from phone number and your address, some put state of origin, some put date of birth, some put some irrelevant information in the CV. So those are not meant to be at the header. They can be in the body of the CV, but not in the header of the CV. So keep important details of headers and footers. And then the longevity of the position also matters. By longevity, I mean the length or the time spent on each role or within each employer. Most employers want to ensure that your role, you, spent, you spent about three or more years on a particular role. So it's not really advisable for you to hop jobs too much. Yeah, it's good to change jobs, but for some roles, they want to see how long you spent on the role to know how much of experience you have. So for me, as a general rule, any job you've kept for more than two years is considered an example of job longevity. So some resumes show that your CV has longevity or that you have longevity on a particular role. And of course, they may not be able to speak with you, but once they look at your CV, they can tell if you've been staying so long on a particular role. It also helps with the years of experience that you've had on that particular job or the particular opportunity. Also, still on optimizing your resume, accurate contact details are very important. We've seen CVs where phone numbers are omitted. Maybe there's a missing number in the phone contact or email is wrongly spelled. So ensure that all your information is properly updated. Use professional email address. Ensure that to, to make that possible, just use a name or your surname. Some other name they have been taken up. Just make like a small modification on the email and that'll be fine. And then your most recent job must always be at the top. So for example, if your most recent job is at the top and the recruiter is trying to check for longevity, they can tell easily, okay, you spent 10 years on this particular role. You should be able to perform on the role. And then how many times does the keywords for the role particularly appear on your CV? If you're applying for customer service, ensure that those keywords are very, very you know, repeatedly mentioned on your CV. So also ensure that you quantify your results, your achievements. Recruiters want to see that on your CV. Hiring managers want to see that on your CV. All employers want to see what you've achieved in the past couple of months. You need to ensure that that is included on your CV. So how many times those keywords appear? It increases the score. And then the higher the score, the better for you. The higher the score, the closer it is that your CV will be, you know, suitable for the role. And then the higher the score, the higher the match for the role. So by score, I mean every CV, most CVs go through eight years passing, those that are not manually reviewed by recruiters. Because right now, employers are finding ways of looking through CVs or looking through applications without having to interview physically for now. So one way they can sort out all CVs will be just going to their application tracking system or applicant tracking system. So do the keywords appear in your job title? If so, how long ago was the role? For example, I had to recruit for a role last month, a training manager role. And the current role of the candidate was not a training management position. So it was a bit difficult. So most of the time, it's always better for you to ensure that your CV has the keywords necessary for the role. If you're applying for a director role, if you're applying for a marketing role, if you're applying for a recruiter role, ensure that that recruitment word, the keyword, applies or appears on your CV 
couple of times. So the key words will enable you to attract the hiring manager's attention. You won't have to start thinking, is this person relevant for the role? Does this person fit the role or not? Still on optimizing your CV. Ensure that your job, your current job matches the job you're applying for. So always match your resume with the actual job. Customize your resume to the job description. If you're applying for a particular role, marketing manager, ensure that your current role is a marketing manager or something close like communications manager. So that when, you're, when the shortlist is being made, you're able to you know, get the role or at least get an interview. So tailor your skills to match the keywords. What skills are you listing on your resume for a particular job description? They should match. So always write a cover letter and address it to the appropriate person. So if you're applying for a role in a particular company that you saw online, just check for more details. Who posted the job? Who were you told to send the resume to? There's always an instruction. And there's always a rule. So always ensure that you follow the rules. This helps with the application process. Ideally, your resume should not be more than two pages. When your resume becomes more than two pages, some recruiters may not have time. So I'm not saying you shouldn't have more than two, but if you have two pages or even three pages, it's better. So to stick to simple bullet point, always helpful. So to enable that your CV is within two pages, your resume is within two pages, you need to stick to simple bullet points. Not that you should have thousands of bullet points, and at the same time, you don't need to have chunk of text. The bullet points enable recruiters to see easily your skills, the jobs, the responsibilities, the tasks that match the role you're looking to work on. So, going on. Video applications are becoming rampant. I've had one or two candidates or one or two employers ask me, do I have video applications from some candidates that they would like to interview? And we're beginning to put up ways of training people or letting them know how the applications can be put together for this period, for this time that you can't really go about. You want to, you need to be interviewed and something needs to be presented to the client on your behalf. So your video applications usually show that you have made an effort to tailor your application to suit the job. It may not be rampant now in Nigeria, but I tell you in the next couple of months, you're going to be seeing a lot of video applications. And then the video applications reveal how you present yourself. It shows your communication style, shows the kind of personality, it shows the kind of attitude, it shows that um, you can fit into the culture sometimes of the way you talk and the way you answer questions when you're being asked. So this really helps when the company wants to match your culture fits to their own culture. So don't recite your resume. You can work on a basic script, but don't recite it. So it should, it's, a job, it's a job you've worked on for a couple of months, a couple of years. It's something you've done, so it's something you should be able to talk about without having to refer to any notes. Yes, you can list bullet points, list notes you want to talk about, but stuff you want to talk about, but don't read through the resume. So your video application should be clear and audible. Ensure that you plan and organize it properly. Ensure that your CV matches the video application. And then your body language also matters. If you're, if you're in a video interview, and then you should look professional. Your tie should be properly straightened out. No rumpled shirts. The shirt should be properly ironed. And then you're sitting straight. Keep your eyes focused on the screen. Keep eye contact with whoever is interviewing you. No distractions. Ensure that there are no children running around. No TVs on, you know. No cleavage. You don't need to slouch. No distractions of any form. No half headshots. You know. Ensure that the CPD video is properly, your camera has the right angle. And then you can reshoot it if you want to, edit it as long as you want to, but ensure that once it is done, it's a perfect one. If you're not sure of the video you've done, you can send to us, some, can send to us. you can contact someone who can help out with video applications. So how do you leverage your network during this COVID time? Everyone is at home now. MDs at home, everybody is relaxed. This is the best time to begin to reach out to people 
you are interested in working with, organizations you're interested in working with. So who do you know? Who can refer you? Recruiters are usually interested in candidates that are referred. So they prioritize referrals and because you know it gives them a better understanding of your character, of the kind of work ethic you have, of your attitude. Because you can always ask whoever is referring you for you know, referrals. You can always ask questions about you. And to, I, of course, I don't want to recommend someone I don't trust. I don't want to recommend someone I don't know. So referrals at this time would help. And then take advantage of a professional network on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has over 500 million users and recruiters are always on LinkedIn checking out candidate profiles. So how updated is your LinkedIn profile? When last was it? When was the last time you updated your LinkedIn profile? When was the last time you posted something on LinkedIn? Not just post anything, post something meaningful about work-related issues, you know, helping others solve problems. Maybe you went through a challenge and you want to share how you came out of that challenge. How do you help other people? You can post those things on LinkedIn as long as it's professional. So make sure your LinkedIn profile is complete. Connect with as many professionals in the network as you can. There's no limit to how many people you can connect with on LinkedIn. For example, you finished the webinar today, check out those who were on the webinar, connect with them on LinkedIn, you know, keep reaching out to people at this time. Then we establish relationships with old colleagues, old schoolmates, you know, you may find job opportunities, who can, who, who can tell? You may never even have thought of as possible, but you may just reach out to someone today and say, oh, I know a company who's looking to hire an HR manager. And then look, I've had people come and visit me and I realize I have this role to fill. And then I just, you know, recommend them for the position. So you, still, you can still network during this time. Staying at home doesn't mean you won't be able to network with others. So use a social network, connect with old friends, like I said before. Request for endorsements, ask for recommendations on LinkedIn, ask for referrals, ask for testimonials, ask people to introduce you to others in their network. This is the time to do that. So write blogs, post ideas, post articles, content that are you know, valuable to others, content that can help others attract and engage your target audience, specifically recruiters. So ensure that you're posting the right thing. Contact recruiters directly, introduce yourself to them, contact companies you admire by email or by email on LinkedIn. Most of the time you can check for jobs that are available on LinkedIn, apply for those jobs. Recruiters want to be sure you are persistent, but don't bug them too much. Don't be over persistent. Don't um, begin to harm them for follow-up. Just once in a while, give them a breather, follow up when you need to, and then allow others. So I can see more people are joining us now. Welcome. And then demonstrate that you're keen and very professional. Everybody, every recruiter wants to see professionalism in their candidates. Nobody wants to hire someone who is unprofessional. Nobody wants to hire someone who is not ready to you know, deliver on the job. You can also show your positivity in this current climate where there's so much negativity all over the place about COVID, about people dying. This is the right time for you to just show that you have some form of positivity. Every employer wants to hire someone who's positive, someone who's forward looking, someone who's forward thinking. So employers are looking to hire positive people. And then once you have a solution, everybody would want to hire you. So you need to project that image to employers. And then your energy and positivity is very important when you're, when you're looking for a job because the employers are having conversations and they are thinking, who should we hire? And then throughout the hiring process, the positivity would also you know, come to play. Follow up with a call, follow up with an email. You sent your CV, you've been contacted, follow up, like I said, but don't harm them. Don't be overbearing, don't be too persistent. Just follow up as you need to. Because they have a lot on their plates and they need to strike a balance with their work and also cope with all that they're going through right now. So how do you think outside the box? Just have it at the back of your mind that some jobs and some industries are booming. 
So this is the time to promote yourself. Promote yourself on social media, promote yourself on LinkedIn, Twitter. I hope everyone is on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Update and change your status with the right content. You need to think outside the box. Apply for rules, whether permanent rules, temporary rules, contract rules. Right now you can do, make do with some contract rules. And believe me, your contract rules is not restricted to Nigeria alone. In the past two weeks, during this time, I've contacted over 10 collaborators outside of Nigeria. Because hey, I'm not going anywhere, but I know that I can contact you. We can collaborate on some other projects. I'm not going to work, so I have all the time. This is the time for you to update your resume. This is the time for you to subscribe to Job Alerts on Glassdoor, on LinkedIn, on DVEX. I don't know if you've heard of DVEX. D-E-V-E-X is a job board and they post jobs most of the time. Follow companies you're interested in on social media. If you've been interested in working with FMCG companies, this is the time to begin to do your research. Spend your time now doing your research on companies, updating your resume, working on the trainings you want to go on to develop yourself. Attend webinars like this. They really, really help you with your career. Follow companies you're interested in. And then reach out to recruitment agencies. Join groups on LinkedIn. Join WhatsApp groups, but you have to be careful with what WhatsApp groups you join. If you're joining any WhatsApp group, ensure that it's a WhatsApp group that would add value to you. I've joined a series of WhatsApp groups during this holiday, and I've developed myself. I joined, the very first one I joined is a women, business, women in Business WhatsApp group. We are doing a book review right now, and believe me, yesterday I was able to sit down with my family, we've not done that in a long time because everybody's always running up and down. But yesterday we sat down and we're actually able to review a chapter of that book. We sat down together and we listened to it. We couldn't have done that in the past, but right now everybody needs to begin to look inwards and see what you can do together as a family. Do what you can do to upgrade yourself and improve yourself. So make your application stand out from the crowd. You can do video applications. Because most companies now, you can we actually not be able to go for a fiscal link interview. But if you send in your video application, it's one step ahead of others. So do things differently. And then one thing that I'll be finishing with is your health right now. It would help you focus on what is necessary. So eat healthy. You can do portion control. Eat when you're hungry. Stop when you're full. It's very, very helpful. It improves your energy as well. If you eat when you're hungry, Stop when you're full. You have the energy because most of the time, if you eat too much, how many of us in that once you eat too much, you just find yourself sleeping? But when you eat just what is enough, you're able to sit, you're able to think, you're able to walk. So exercise, you don't have to do it every day, maybe every other day. Communicate as much as you can right now. Begin to have virtual coffee or amala joints with your friends via WhatsApp, via Zoom or Instagram. Okay. Mindfulness is also very important at this time. Try and meditate. Listen to music. What makes you calm? What makes you, what delights you? What makes you happy? So begin to do those things now. In doing those things, you'll be able to understand the real you. You begin to discover yourself. Sleep and rest as much as you can. Because you're going through so much stress. Sleep will help you balance such stress. Initiate discussions about available rules on LinkedIn. Reach out to people. Don't wait for people to connect with you. Connect with them on LinkedIn. The worst you can say is no. At least you've tried. So, you know, keep reaching out to others at this time. Manage your exposure on social media. There's a lot of negativity out there. Spend less time on social media. You know, get up in the morning. The first one are unplug from every form of social media. Most of us wake up. The first thing we reach out for is our phone. And once you wake up, the first thing to do is for you to just spend one hour, meditate, not on social media, bond with your family, exercise if you have to, you know, get information from the security official websites too. So after the one hour, you can begin to think, okay, make a plan. What am I doing? I hope most of us have our workstation, a place you know, this is where I go to within the house, that is my office. You know, especially when you have children around, let them know this is mommy's office or this is daddy's office or, you know, mommy's at work now. And then they'll respect the privacy and give you time. So get information from only 
designated websites. Actually, regarding COVID, there's so much going out there about all sorts of negative news. So you just need to keep yourself, you know, balanced and keep yourself healthy. So don't read irrelevant posts. A lot of messages come on WhatsApp, email. You don't have to click on all of them. Once you click on it and you're not sure, just delete most of them. So slow down, stay calm, be very, very cautious. Be kind to others right now. Show compassion. In showing compassion, someone else will show compassion to you. So we're almost done. We have like 10 more minutes and then we'll take questions. Post relevant information that will build others up. Stay connected and encourage others. Don't lose your learning and development focus. This is the time to do a lot of trainings, read inspirational books, attend webinars, do some catch up with your friends, seek advice if you need advice. This is the time for you to even ask for advice. Everybody is home now, so you can seek advice if you want to. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. We're here for you. We're here to help. So if you have any question, please um, raise your hand and then we'll unmute you and you can go ahead. Anything? Do we have any yes, questions? Yes, we have questions. They're yet to send a question. Okay, so I've, I've told them to chat. Okay, to send a chat. Okay, I was raising his hand, so let me unmute him. Okay. So he can. can hear him. Yes. Okay, we're listening. Good morning, man. Good morning, everyone. Morning, uh, please, yes, man. This is a very wonderful presentation. <laughs> Thank you so much for this. So I just want to ask a question along the lines of, um, so for me, I'm in a field that is um, relatively new okay. in the country. And so I'm a change manager. So um, I got into this role two years ago at my current place. That, that's what I do. Um, and I'm also, I'm interested in, in building in that particular um, career space, but I also want to have experience in um, some different field, a different sector than the sector I'm currently in. So during this time, I, I, I don't know how I can, how you can help me out with tips on how to make that transition on, uh, because it's not a field that uh, there are too many people within the country that actively have departments um, dedicated to chain management. Most times and some companies put it under HR, but it's, it's a relatively new field. So I don't know how, how, how that is. Yeah, I've heard of chain management before. The usually roles you find in IT, like telecoms industries. I have a system yes, with change management manager, chain management specialist. So right now, I think it's the best time for you to, to sell that on your CV. People are managing change now. Organizations are managing change. So whatever sector, I'm sure you'll be able to fit in. But I'll need to take a look at your CV. Let me know what your background is so we'll see how we can match your current change management to, to the previous rules. I, know, I think I've interviewed you before. You are an HSC yes, person. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How so we can link HSC with change management? All we need to do is let's look at your CV. Let's look at the organizations you work for, the one you currently work for, and we can build something down that line. So just okay. look at us after this. All right, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're welcome. So, do we have any more questions? We've got five more minutes. For adventure, we can't answer your question and the, the session is over. Please reach out to us. We'll give you our phone number. And then Lukman is asking a question too. Lukman, go ahead. Hello, good morning. Morning. Madam Luke. Felicia, thanks. Thanks a lot. This is um, a very, very educative and um, I can say inspiring information I've gotten from you today. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Um, I initially wanted to ask about, um, okay, um, I'm in a role um, in core logistics. Okay. I've, um, I've been a depot officer, I've been um, a fleet officer, distribution coordinator. Uh, in the field of procurement, I haven't, I haven't touched in the field of logistics. But I find myself trying to apply for roles. Okay, presently I'm a fleet manager. Okay. And let's say I see a role that says um, logistics manager. 
So I always, I always get the feeling of whenever you are trying to apply for a role, you try to make your present role, um, um, you try to edit your present role to match with the current role you are trying to apply to. Okay. Yes. You know. So I, I don't know if, 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 uh, uh, and. Go on. Go on. Yeah. Yes. 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 So, yeah. So I just feel, if okay. Yes. I've been a distribution manager before. I've been, a, but that current role I'm managing now is not a full logistics manager. Okay. okay. It's only based on fleet management. How and long have you been on the role? I'm so editing it to about, be logistics manager. You know, we talked about longevity. How long have you been on the role for? Yeah, yes. I've been, I've been, I've been on two years warehouse, two years distribution, three years fleet management now. So that's long so that, that qualifies me. Yes, yes, yes. But I find it, I find it most times when I go for interviews, um, I, I hear, I hear the HR person asking me for pay slip. Yes, some would ask for it. It is not. Um... You understand? Yes, and my pay slips, my pay slips clearly states my present role. Okay. So, yeah, so if I'm to do that, then it's as if I'm uh, being fraudulent or something like that. No, 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 no. You're not changing your job titles. You're just ensuring that your job title matches the role you're applying for. So if you're a fleet manager or warehouse manager or logistics manager, those roles work hand in hand. So you don't yes, yes, that's correct. That role. Yes, so if you're applying for a role as a logistics manager and you're currently a fleet manager, there's only change in your job title. No one is saying change your job title. Just ensure that your role, the keyword for the role you are looking to apply for, is on your CV. So if you apply for a logistics manager role, of course you don't fleet management. So fleet management is one keyword that should be on your CV. Okay. So look, let me take another yes. person's question. You can reach out to us. After All right. Thank you. So that others have the opportunity. Caleb Bale, please. You can go ahead with your question. You've been unmuted. Hi, good morning, Felicia. Morning, Caleb. I remember good you. Morning. Yeah, thank you, Felicia. Nice one, nice presentation. Thank you. I don't have much question. I don't know if we can have access to the slide because it's kind of a rich slide. I don't know if we it's possible. We can send you the video, but we can have a re we can have another webinar on the same title. But what you need to do is you send me your questions ahead of time so that we can understand what exactly to talk about during the, the, the presentation. So yes, we will send you the video of this webinar so that you would have um, more information about what we discussed. I knew a lot of people would have questions, so, and I knew you'd be taking notes. That was why yeah. I highlighted everything for you to see. And then you can get back to you. Have Victoria Baba to can I share, Sorry, go can on. I share, can I share this slide with other people that are not in this video? Is it possible? Yes, I just you can. Knowledge okay. you power, so please feel free. Yeah, thanks a lot, Felicia. I really appreciate it. Well done. You're welcome. I see Victoria Babatunde. Victoria, you can go ahead. Okay, hi, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Victoria. and Madam Felicia. Thanks for the presentation, it was amazing. Thank you. Um, so I have experience about four years' experience in human resource management okay. in two industries, uh, media. And that's the most recent. And then before that, it was engineering. Okay. But I'm trying to um, sort of get into the non-for-profit space. Okay, so you're trying to pivot. But, call pivot. Yeah, but that has been, okay, that, that has been an issue. So usually, they expect that you have some experience in not-for-profit already, not-for-profit organization already, which I don't have. And it has been an issue for me. And Okay, so also I had to sort of relocate. So I was in Lagos before and moved to Abuja for some reasons. Okay. And so I'm kind of not doing anything at the moment. What, what you can and do? So, Sorry, go on, go on, go on, go on. Victoria. Yeah, so still trying to um, break into that not-for-profit space first. Or, you know, instead of just looking for any job anywhere, Okay. just particularly out for that not-for-profit space. Do you have any tips that... Yeah, the you tip know, would be tips? volunteer with not-for-profit. I have two you can volunteer with. There's a um, volunteer... Okay. Hold on, let me just check on right. There's, there's so many NGOs. There's so many NGOs. There's Faith Foundation in Nigeria. There's so many that you can just, you know, volunteer with for now. And then you can, with the experience, 
gym start to start applying for new roles. I remember when I wanted to move into a child from the banking mm -hmm. sector. I had to volunteer, I had to do a lot of free jobs. I did a lot of, I did some jobs without being paid. So that would help you gather the experience and then with time you can move on to something else. So I moved from the banking industry to HR because I did volunteer work. I was doing three, three days a week and I was resuming at nine, resuming at two. Mm -hmm. So with that, I gained the experience. Right now, as I speak to you, I'm volunteering for you version. The people that provide this um, service for Bible application. The Bible app, okay, yeah. So, because I'm getting experience, I want to be able to pro do programming, I want to be able to do, you know, customer service on that high level tech. I've not met with these people before, but with this COVID, I've been able to reach out to millions of people who have issues with reading the Bible, who have issues with downloading the app. Mm. So mm. we need to do a lot of volunteer. So let's talk after now, and then we'll okay. get more information. I can see oh. Messi and Fokure because we want to be able to take as many questions as we can. Thank you. Messi, go ahead. Good morning, Ma. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Messi. Thank you so much for this initiative. We're very, very grateful. Okay, my question is about the LinkedIn sharing and trying to position yourself. Okay. Um, I tend to share some stuff on my WhatsApp status because okay. I'm this kind of person that anything that happens, I tend to um, draw um some things for me the lesson perhaps and when i share those things many of my friends they will be like why don't you share these things here why don't you share these things there but i don't know there is this fear i have to share things on linkedin it's like i feel it's unfit for that space especially because it's daily activities maybe what happens on the road in the market and all of that do it on instagram do it on, instagram. Do it on facebook okay Yes. For me too, I don't have, I have posting on professional things on LinkedIn. Even Christian things, I think it's not for LinkedIn. So I do it on Twitter, I do it on Instagram and Facebook. So please go ahead. I okay, see, that's all. I Thank you so much. much. You're welcome. I see Lukman, sorry, Oyulola raising her hand. Okay, she's, she's off now. Any other questions? before so if you have any question you can reach out to us our phone numbers 0814-240-7343 0814-240-7343 so you can reach out to us if you need cv template guidance cv coaching call cv review call linkedin review calls or re linkedin review in your way we review your CV and then we can email it to you at a token. So just make sure you call those numbers or you reach out to us on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, any of those forms. So if you also want us to repeat this um, webinar, just send us an email and then depending on the number of requests, we'll do this again. But look out for more webinars like this. We have one next week. We're collaborating with um, an HR consultant from Canada. And then we're collaborating with another HR consultant from the UK and another one from in Amsterdam. So it will be easy for everyone. We want to have a global perspective of how to apply for jobs. We don't just want to restrict ourselves to the Nigerian economy. We want to be able to apply for jobs in any organization in any country. Right now is the best time for you to work in organizations even outside of Nigeria. Like I said earlier before, I said I'm already collaborating with five women looking for how to reach out to other women. I reached out to 10 of them, five have come back to me, and already three of them were having webinars all through next week. So it's the best time for you now to do all you couldn't do. For us, we've been thinking of coming online with this training for a long time, but it's, you know, it just happens that we're able to do all you now. So do all you can now, take the best advantage of what you can take the best advantage of now, and then, We'll see you again very soon. Do we have any questions? Our number has been typed into the chat box, so you can pick the numbers from there. So the number again is 0814-240-7343. Just ask for Clinton, and then we'll take up your request from there. So let me just scroll through the questions again and see if there are some questions we have not addressed.
Okay, I think we're good to go. So look out for more webinars like this. If this has, you know, been a good one for you, give us feedback on LinkedIn, on Facebook, tweet about it, post about it, let others be part of it, because this is the best we can do for each other. There's, it's not always all about bad news, there's some good news. You can see the potential losers and potential winners on the slide that we just shared. So there's so much information that we can, that we can share with each other at this time. It's not the time to be sad, it's not the time to be downcast or to be bored or to say, I don't know what I'm doing. Read a lot of books, attend webinars. Don't lose your training focus through social media because you know there are times to pick up your phone to send an email and then a message comes in and before you know what's happening, you're going from WhatsApp to Twitter and doing nothing. So you need to be able to manage your time well at this time. So in the absence of no other question, I'll be signing out now. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you for registering. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, JC. I can see you. You know, let me unmute everyone so you can see everyone. <laughs> So thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Caleb. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, I can see you. I can see Bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.